I sent my dog's DNA to three different DNA testing companies and the results all came back a little different. Let's talk about why. This video is sponsored by DataCamp. We're gonna be talking about analyzing genetic data today and that's all done with bioinformatics. In grad school, I used Python and R all the time, but when I got there, I didn't even know how to use the terminal. So I learned via a lot of Google and help from friends. And this is where something like DataCamp would have been awesome. DataCamp is an online learning platform that makes it easy to build data analytical skills. You can learn at your own pace with interactive courses and hands-on exercises. And it really is for all skill levels, from Excel 101 to advanced courses. I haven't coded in a couple years now and a refresher would be great. So I took a Python assessment to find out where I should start and it placed me right at the edge of novice and intermediate and that totally feels right. So I'm gonna go back and relearn some Python that I had forgotten. DataCamp doesn't require any special software. You can do it all right in your browser, which is awesome. So it's a really easy way to learn or refresh some coding and analytical skills. If you wanna do things like analyze genetic data, learning Python and R are super, super helpful. Subscriptions start at $25 per month for unlimited access to courses, but you can use my link in the description down below to check out the first chapter of any course totally free. This is Penny. We adopted her in May of 2020 and she is just an absolute sweetheart. Her favorite things in the world are naps and chicken and more naps, uh, especially naps in the sunshine. She is the sweetest dog we could ever have hoped for. She is so sweet and all she wants to do is snuggle and we love her so much, so much. We got her from a rescue and they told us that she was a Chihuahua Corgi mix and Chihuahua I can see, but Corgi not so much. So I sent her DNA off to get some doggy DNA ancestry testing done and I wanna be clear, we would love her just the same if the results came back and said that she was half Chihuahua, half Loch Ness monster, but I am a geneticist and I couldn't resist. So I also didn't just send her DNA to one company, I sent it to three. You can get down or over here. Okay, you wanna sit your butt right there? You can sit your butt right there. The way each company analyzes the DNA is a little different. And to understand why, we've got to talk a bit about the structure of DNA and why there really isn't such a thing as a Chihuahua gene. A Chihuahua, a Golden Retriever, and a German Shepherd are all dogs. Even though they all look super different, genetically, they are 99.9% .9 identical. And this makes sense. They are mostly the same. They pretty much all have limbs and brains and ears and fur and tails and toe beans and boopable snoots. So they all have genes for making those different parts. And usually it's not just one gene that makes up a trait, but many. There isn't just one eye color gene, but many genes that all contribute to eye color. And each of those genes can come in different versions or alleles. For example, there are a number of genes involved in coat length. And it's not that there is a gene for short hair and a gene for long hair, but rather different versions of a hair length gene that can predispose your dog to having short or long hair. And the difference between these versions is usually really small. For example, there's a position in a gene called FGF5 where a T base is associated with having long hair and a C base is associated with having short hair. And remember that like you, dogs have two copies of every gene, one from each parent. So dogs that have a TT at that position typically have long fur and dogs with a CC or CT typically have short fur. So you can look at that position in your dog's DNA and make a prediction about what their traits will be. So when we think about the whole dog genome, 99.9% .9 of it is the same, but it's studded with these small locations that differ between dogs. Some of them are SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, and others are indels, short insertions or deletions of a few bases. And there are also small regions of repeats that can vary between dogs. But most of the DNA is exactly the same, and really it's just about 0.1% of the locations in the 2.8 billion base pair long genome that give us all of the different kinds of dogs in the world. So back to the tests. If 99.9% .9 of the DNA between dogs is the same, you don't really need to look at that 99.9% .9 of the DNA to learn something about your dog. And the dog genome is over 2.8 billion base pairs long, so it can be time consuming and expensive to look at parts that aren't gonna tell you much. So two of the companies, Embark and Wisdom Panel, just look at that other 0.1%. They do this using something called a microarray. 
This is a chip covered in tiny pieces of DNA that match to those 0.1% of locations, about 100,000 to 200,000 locations depending on the company. So if you add a dog DNA sample to this chip and see what binds, you can tell if your dog has an A, T, C, or G at each of these specified locations. On the other hand, Darwin's Dogs does whole genome sequencing. This means that they read every single base pair of your dog's DNA on a DNA sequencer. This captures those many little regions of variation, but it also allows them to look for new unidentified locations of interest as they sequence more and more dogs and learn more about the dog genome. So how can this tell me if Penny is a Chihuahua or a Corgi or an Alaskan Malamute? As you can maybe already guess, since I told you that dogs are mostly genetically the same, there aren't Chihuahua genes or Husky genes or Terrier genes. But there are variants or alleles of those genes and many genetic markers along the genome that show up in some breeds more than others. There are also patterns of markers that show up more in one breed than another. So before they can analyze our pet's DNA, these companies look at the DNA of lots and lots of dogs, and they figure out which SNPs or alleles or patterns show up more in one breed than another. So they look at all the Chihuahuas together and they say, okay, they're most likely to have DNA that looks like this. Then they do the same thing for the Huskies and the Dalmatians and the German Shepherds and the Terriers and on and on. Then when they sequence your dog, they can compare the patterns of DNA in your dog's DNA to the types of dogs in their reference panel and say, okay, at this location, Penny's DNA looks most like the DNA found in a Chihuahua. And at this location, it looks most like the DNA found in a terrier. And they do this for the whole genome and they calculate percentages. So how did Penny's DNA look? Okay, we're gonna view Penny's... Ooh, I was wrong. 37% Chihuahua, 25% Cocker Spaniel, 14% American Staffordshire Terrier. Interesting. Well, now we gotta see what the other two come back as. Oh, they sent us a video? Interesting. So as I suspected, the results aren't the same. And I can't wait to get the third one back. That's gonna be fun. And according to Darwin's Dogs, Penny is 22.9% Cocker Spaniel, 20% Chihuahua, and a whole bunch of, you know, other mixes. So all three of Penny's ancestry reports came back and said that her major components were Chihuahua and Cocker Spaniel, which was surprising. But then all of the other percentages were pretty different. Two of them had American Staffordshire Terrier, one of them had Poodle and Pomeranian, then there was Dachshund and Pitbull. So the main components of her results were all the same, but they weren't identical. And why not? They all sequenced the same DNA. It's because each company is using a different reference population. Imagine that the company only sequenced two types of dogs, Dalmatians and German Shepherds. When I sent in Penny's sample, they would have only had those two types of dogs to compare it to. And so they would match her DNA to the closest breed possible or tell me that they couldn't find a good match. If they then added Chihuahuas to their reference panel, now they would have a much better match and be able to update her percentages with much more confidence. So because no company has sequenced every single dog in the world, they have to rely on trying to build the best, most diverse reference panel possible. But each company's panel is gonna be a little different, so they might have slightly different results when trying to assign breeds to sections of Penny's DNA. And as the reference panel grows and they sequence more and more dogs, their confidence in their matches will get even better. That's why you might get an update on your dog's breed mix. It's not because your dog's DNA has changed, but rather because the reference panel it's being compared to has changed. And if you've had direct-to-consumer testing like 23andMe or Ancestry DNA done, you might be wondering if the same thing is true for us humans too. And the answer is yeah. You might get updated Ancestry percentages every now and then, and it's not because your DNA has changed, but because the reference panel has changed. And the pattern matching works in the same way too. My DNA test came back that I was 45% French and 25% Lithuanian. But that's not because there are French genes and Lithuanian genes. It just means that 45% of the markers in my DNA looked most like the pattern of markers found in people with long family histories in France. 
and 25% looked most like the pattern of markers in people with long family histories in Lithuania. And again, these markers make up a tiny, tiny fraction of the genome. You and me are 99.9% .9 identical at the DNA level, just like Penny and Pandora and Java are. This isn't a review of these companies. I'm not ranking them. I think they all did a good job. If you want to test your dog's DNA to find out what breeds it is, you really only need to do it once, and it's kind of just your preference on what options or other features these services offer that will make you choose one or the other. Come on up. We gotta say thank you. Come here. Yeah, good girl. Okay, good girl. Yeah. Thank you to DataCamp for sponsoring this video and thank you to you for watching. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons who help me to make all kinds of different videos about genetics. And also a huge thank you to everybody on Twitter who sent in pictures of your pups that I could use in this video. I mean, I know people like sharing pictures of their dogs, but I can't tell you how much joy there is in just getting a notification list full of dog photos. I loved it even if Penny didn't. And as always, remember to go forth and do science.